in this hypothetical developmental network, we have a sequence that codes for spiky cells in the ectoderm of the spiny beetle. In the sequence, S activates P, which activates I, which inhibits K. And when K is inhibited, then it allows for the production of E, which activates spikes. Our first mutation looks at the deactivation of gene P. And when P is not produced, then I cannot be produced, meaning K is allowed to inhibit E and the activation of spikes. And the result would be no spikes. Our second mutation is on I. And when I is not produced, it still allows K to be produced, which can inhibit E and the, in and the activation of spikes just like before. And re the result would be no spikes. A mutation in I and E does the same thing, but since there's no E to begin with, it does not matter that the other genes are not coded for because E is not functioning for, to produce spikes even if it could. A mutation in S and K would, however, produce spikes because while S is not coded for, K is not present either, which allows E to be expressed. Some reasons this would happen in nature would be that perhaps the cells with spikes have to be present in certain patterns or locations to be functional on the beetle. And a way this could happen on a biological level would be if S were a gene that coded for protein P, if protein P initiated the translation of gene I, if the translation of gene I prevented the translation of gene K, and then when gene I was translated and gene K was not, protein E could be produced. Protein E would then contribute to the formation of spikes.